Hello game devs, welcome to episode number 5. My name's James and in this episode we are looking at phaser 3 scenes and we're creating the main menu for our game. Before we get started, we need to change the tile size in our game. As you remember in episode number 3, I said that the tiles are going to be 16 by 16 pixels and that's why we set the width to 360 divided by 2 and the height to 640 pixels divided by 2. However, I'm almost done creating the game Endless Cave. If you want to play it, I put the link in the description below. And I realized that 16 by 16 pixels is too small. We want to use 32 by 32 pixel tiles and for this reason we have to change the width and the height in the game configuration and we also have to change the width and the height values in the resize app function. Now that we have doubled the size of the game screen, the text that we created so far is only half the size. But thanks to our text prefab, all we need to do is go to the prefab, go to the init style method and double the font sizes. Lastly, let's double the height and the line width of the loading bar to make it fit on the bigger game screen. And as you can see now, the text and the loading bar have the perfect size again. Alright, now we can start working on our main menu. First of all, we can delete the preload method from the menu scene because all the assets were already loaded into the game inside the preload scene. And now inside the create method, this is where we program the main features of the scene. In the case of our main menu, we want to display the game title Endless Cave and we want to have a short text saying click to play so that if the player clicks the screen or presses the enter button on the keyboard, he will start playing the game. We can switch from the menu scene to the play scene by typing this scene start and then the key of the scene which is play. But the play scene doesn't exist yet at this moment. So let's go ahead and create the play scene just so we can switch from the menu scene to the play scene. Remember, to create a new scene, we extend the phaser 3 scene class and we give it a unique key and set active to false. Now, back in our menu scene, let's create the two text objects. For both the game title and the click to play text, we can use our text prefab. We pass the current scene as a reference and we also pass it the X and Y coordinates where we want to position the text object on the screen and we pass it a key for the styling. And if we refresh our browser window now, we can see that our main menu starts to look like a main menu. However, even though it says click to start, clicking doesn't do anything right now. So we need to create these inputs. We want to be able to click the screen to start the game or press the enter key on the keyboard. Let's start by clicking the screen first. To listen for this click event, we can use the phaser3 input object and use the on method. For almost all your UI inputs, it is highly suggested that you listen to the pointer up event. The reason for this is that if we would be listening to the pointer down event, it could happen that while you press down, another screen starts and your mouse is still down and it will trigger another down event on the next scene. However, if we listen to the pointer up event, we can prevent this kind of behavior because the mouse button will already be released by the time we reach the next scene or next screen. So the first argument is the key for the kind of mouse event we want to listen to. The second argument is the callback function that will be called on this event. And the last argument is the context in which the callback method will be called. In other words, this line of code is saying whenever I release the mouse button anywhere on the screen, run the go play method. And if we look at the go play method, all it does is it starts the play scene. Now let's do the same thing, but with the enter key on the keyboard. The keyboard events work a bit differently because we cannot listen to a specific key on the keyboard. Actually, whenever any key is pressed, 
it emits an event and that event has a code saying which type of key was just pressed. So let's create a function that listens to this keyboard event and only runs the go play method when the enter key was pressed. And for the same reasons we listened to the pointer up event on the mouse, we are listening to the key up event here for the keyboard. And as you can see now, with phaser 3, it's very easy to listen to these types of events. Here we listen to the keyboard event where we release a button and it's gonna run the handle key up function and it will be executed inside the scenes context. All right, so let's make sure these events are both created inside the menu scenes create method and then we can refresh the browser window to test it. As you can see, I can use the mouse click or the enter button on my keyboard to start the game. Our main menu is now basically done, but for the future, we're going to need a create background method. And this create background method, for now, it's just creating a um, rectangle of the same current color. And then inside app.js, we change the background color to black. Make sure you also add the same background rectangle to the preload scene to keep the same color. If you're confused why we just did this, basically in the future we're going to implement screen shaking into the game and for that we need a black background in the game configuration. So we had to add a rectangle for the brown background in the preload scene and in the main menu. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you liked it. Please give the video a like, subscribe to my channel and if you have any questions leave them in the comments below or you can also hop on my discord channel, I'm usually always around. If you want to see more of my games follow me on twitter and lastly